Hey everyone, Isaac Brooks here with another video, and today I'm going to be going over the results of Crown Jewel, which started off with the triple, not triple, uh, six man tag team match between the original Bloodline and the Bloodline 2.0, with the fake Bloodline. Um, and uh, the match, in terms of like, entrances, had. Um, Solo Sokoa, Jigafut 2, and Tamatanga, and Tonga Loa in the corner, all coming out as a joint unit. Whereas, uh, Roman Reigns and Jimmy Uso came out, and then Jay came out through the crowd. So. Instantly, they weren't really working as a team. And as far as the match goes, it was mostly uh, Jimmy and Jay working together. And kind of leaving Roman out of it for the most part. And then, of course, uh, Solo, Fatu, and Tonga were all uh, <clears throat> putting in a joint effort. Um, and then as soon as Roman got in there, multiple times where it looked like his team was going to win, but then of course the referee got taken out. Um, Solo started hitting spikes and all that other shit. Super kicks from the Usos and Fatu. And then uh, it ended with uh, Solo delivering multiple different spikes of Roman pinning the original Tribal Chief. The only travel chief. And I stand by that. But then after the match, Solo's band of a uh, reckless uh, lunatics delivered a post match attack. On Roman and the Usos. And then Sami Zayn tried to make the save, but only made things worse after uh, lulling uh, Solo into a false sense of security and accidentally uh, hitting Roman Reigns with a Hoover kick, which then caused uh, Jimmy to get mad. And Was trying to settle Sammy. So, needless to say, nobody uh, on the Roman Reigns side of things was too happy about the outcome. Unfortunately, Solo's version of the Bloodline got the W. Which then led to the next match, which was the Fatal 4 Tag. Flash Legend and Dakara Jackson against Chelsea Green and Piper Niven. Um. Dio Sky and Kyrie Sane taking on the current champs, Bianca Belair and Jay Cargill. Um, which uh, there was a lot of like back and forth tag action and some high flying and low flying. Uh, even some miscommunication between uh, Sane and Sky. And then uh, the biggest amount of miscommunication came between. Uh, Green and Piper. Where Piper uh, was going for like some kind of like top rope reverse splash kind of deal, and uh, her intended target moved out of the way, which I think was Cargill. Or maybe it was Baylor, I don't remember. Um, but 
Chelsea got squished instead. But then that all led to uh, Jaden Bianca. Um, eventually picking up the win and retaining the Tag Team Championships. Which then led to Seth Rollins challenging Big Bronson Reed. In which Rollins had a very interesting outfit. Like a mixture of like leather and denim. He tried to uh, attack Bronson before the bell could even ring. Which didn't really work out in his favor at the, at the beginning there, but... Eventually, uh, Bronson got a little too cocky, especially after a couple of tsunamis um, near the end of it. Well, it's like a couple of curb stomps, even a super stomp. Uh, and Reed was cut open, and even after Rollins beat him, inevitably, um, Bronson got up. And it was almost like something out of like one of those horror films. I think the monster slayed, but just pops up at an just pops out like like nothing even happened. So I'm sure that issue is far from over. Um, then it was the first of two Crown Jewel title matches. Nia Jax versus Liv Morgan. In which, of course, uh, all kinds of interference happen with that. Um, Tiffany Stratton trying to cash in on one of the championships. I'm not really sure which one she was going after. It was hard to tell. But it almost seemed like she was going to cash in on Nia's. But then, of course, uh, Raquel and Dom got involved to help Liv. So, Liv Morgan is the first ever uh, women's crown jewel champion. And instead of actually getting to carry the title around, the winners of the crown jewel titles got Super Bowl style rings instead, which are still pretty hefty. Kind of make this look small. But. Yeah. Liv. With some help. Defeated Nia Jax. And then of course Triple H awarded the championship. And then after the show awarded the. The ring to her. And the eventual um men's crown jewel championship winner and then there was a match that was supposed to happen but because of um let's just say chaos ensuing um it never did it got ruled it got ruled a no contest and that was the match between uh kevin owens and randy orton Orton uh, was jumped from behind by Kevin Owens with a steel chair to the back of the knee. And then uh, he took the fight to the ringside, and Orton delivered the, that, that back suplex to the announce table a few times. And they got into the crowd area where Kevin used the production stuff to whack Orton in the head. And then set him on one of the production tables. And then went to higher ground and delivered an elbow. All the while, Kevin Owens was trying to play some mind games while well, uh, wearing a shirt with uh, Randy Orton's father, Kelby Bob Orton. Uh, so... Nobody really won or lost, but... Kevin Owens was the only one that walked out. So, I guess by default, kind of, 
kind of a default. Kevin won that without even winning or even losing. But Randy Orton had to be ruled out. So, sure, there'll be more to come with that. Much like with the, the Bronson and Seth or even the Bloodline thing. And then also the United States title triple threat match. Andrade, Carmelo Hayes, and L.A. Knight. Which, uh, at the beginning, Knight just kind of sat in the corner and let uh, Hayes and Andrade just level each other. And then, uh, after a while, he got involved. And then just the usual uh, triple threat hijinks came out of it all. And, uh... After a couple of BFTs, LA Knight is still the United States champion. And then, of course, they had to make, make mention of the success of the former United States champion in Saudi Arabia. And I do not fucking even want to say his name because I'm already kind of pissed and annoyed. So, the less that name is said the better. But anyway, Ellie Knight, yeah. Still United States champ. Then the main event, Gunther versus Cody Rhodes for the men's crown jewel title. In which uh, Gunther's plan going into it was trying to make Cody Rhodes pass out, choke him out. Um, which he tried multiple times. All the while, uh, Locking Cody into multiple different submissions, and then Chris Crude Cody doing his his moves like going for bionic elbow attempts, uh, going for Cody cutters and crossroads, and even some disaster kicks. I think. Uh, of course, it's going through with some power bombs and chops. And German suplexes, and it was one. Fatal attempt at a uh, German suplex that marked the end of the match for Gunther because he was getting a little too confident and went for a German. And Cody took a uh, move out of Red the Hitman Hart's playbook and uh, <clears throat> hit a roll up on. Gunther. So there was a surprise roll up spot, and there's even like a hardest part of the ring spot hitting the ring apron. So I'm sure Sean Miller got a kick out of those moments there. Uh, and speaking of, congratulations, congratulations to Simon Miller on winning the Progress Wrestling Championship in the independent scene. And congratulations to success. To anybody on the independent scene, for that matter. So uh, Cody got the win over Gunther, and Gunther, despite all the harsh things that he said about Cody going into it, gave him the respect that was earned. And then, of course, Triple H and some uh, Saudi Arabia locals presented Cody with the belt. Yeah, that's pretty much it. It was uh, all all intents and purposes a it was a show. <laughs> it wasn't great. It wasn't bad, but definitely could have been better for sure. Um, still kind of disappointed that um, Solo's group defeated the original Bloodline. Also, kind of bummed that the Kevin Owens or a newer match didn't happen, but I kind of get why they didn't have it happen either because it would have been hard for people to uh, um, figure who would win that. And I was impressed by the uh, the showing of um, 
Lash Legend and uh, Takara Jackson, or how you say her name. They impressed me. move into like another move which was absolutely wild uh, and then of course um, Andrade and Carmelo within the uh, confines of that triple threat match with Knight had some impressive spots um, so all in all decent at best show so if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up and if you're new to the channel consider subscribing sure what the next video was going to be and when, but keep an eye out for it. So until then, until we're signing off.